And we're back. <laughs> yeah. Take two. As mentioned in the cut take, the original take, it has been five years in the making. Five plus, maybe. Recording on Skype, we're still just kind of trying to get used to the AV stuff. I don't know. I don't. In fact, with the mic, I guess all you have to do is plug it in and then do like your settings and then like address the fact that you're using a mic. That took yeah. like at least a couple of days. Right. It's going to take a while, but you know, you got to learn on the fly. You read like the manual? Uh, yeah, well, I bought some, some pretty cheap equipment, but you sound I good wasn't, wasn't going to go overboard with like the equipment. And then I feel like I added too much pressure. Just spend like $3,000 on equipment. <laughs> yeah. But I, feel like, like, I wouldn't be myself Shroy, on the pod. <laughs> like the Shroy just listens to us weekly. <laughs> Speaking of the Shroy. Yeah. Uh, he had a birthday party. Oh, this shit. This was over the weekend. All right. And it was a surprise party. Uh, Brad Barhorse was there. This Actually, this is a great way to start a podcast, is talk about our friends that no one else knows. <laughs> <laughs> but we're all excited, like, hoping this has got to be a surprise. Like, do you think he knows? Do you think he knows? You know, the typical banter before a surprise party. And he comes in, and he's very genuinely surprised. And Brad's first comment is, he had no idea. What an idiot. Such a shroy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome, man. But Where was it? It was, well, it was at a bar in Akron, which... What? A more bleak town on Earth Jesus, does not exist dude. than Akron, Ohio. Yeah. Good, so, like, why not Toledo? You guys didn't couldn't pull enough cash together? Well, the funny thing is, Shroy lives in Cleveland. Yeah. So, I, I mean, I guess the idea there was to, like, throw him off the scent or whatever. Which, I mean, it was well-planned. He was surprised. What were you got? So, what was the plan to get him to Akron? Or was he already doing something there? Well, I, did, I didn't know. His mom had texted me uh, kind of last minute, just like, hey, it's Shroy's 30th birthday. We're having a surprise party for him. Oh, fuck. You know, trying to get his friends 30. to come. And... I was like, yeah, sure. Like, I'll be there. And she just gave me the address, and it was like Suite <laughs> One Ten or whatever in downtown Akron. I was like, what? I mean, I didn't ask any questions. Like, All right. And it was a bar, like a brewery, and it was actually really cool. Like, what do you really need to set up a brewery in like a big city? Uh, a decent set of beers, some sort of like obscure game, and like a pinball machine. And yeah, that's what it offered. But the beers were fantastic and it was a cool place. But I mean, it was <laughs> a Saturday night. We had the whole crew there. But we had like a little reserved section. She'd reserved like a little section for us. And in the main like bar portion, maybe eight people. Yeah, I, but there's probably like 150 of those breweries just in Akron. Like there, I can't drive drunk without crashing into a brewery anymore. Have you been to like, Akron? No, not Akron, but like I'll go out into the boonies around uh, Columbus, and there'll be shit everywhere. Yeah, I always thought the was it Fox and whatever. That's a pretty obscure location. I mean, it's close to Short North, but it's still in kind of a shithole area. What? Which one? Uh, Fox and Snow or something like that. Yeah, that's a that's a coffee place, but the, yeah, is it's it? Close. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Fox in the Snow is. It's like right down the street from Seventh Sun, though. Well, I'm glad I didn't stop in for a pint. By the way, what you what you sipping on? Uh, I've got a Natter Day, which <laughs> I'm pretty, I'm I'm firmly in that camp because. All right, I haven't had that yet. You've not had a Natter Day? Is it is it, is it seltzer? No, no, it's uh, uh, well, it says on the can here, um, for those who like strawberry lemonade and drinking beer. Uh, gay guys. It well. It doesn't say that on the can. Yeah, it's implied. <laughs> so the, I guess these, it was like a summer beer that they came out with. And it's a fun can. There's flamingos on it, and it's pink. And this doesn't really help me. I'm sure it's great. But, I, haven't, I haven't had it yet. But they got into seltzer. I'm going to crack open mine right now. And that's, this is shouts out to uh, North High. 
Brewing Company. This is the High Five Pale Ale. Right on. A little little free plug for them. Yeah, no, they contacted me. <laughs> so, oh, speaking of which, very fun show. Before we get to any of this stuff, need to give a quick shout out to our sponsor, Lit Ass Wings. Do you like <laughs> eating chicken? And do you like getting drunk? What if I told you you could do both at the same time? <laughs> Lit Ass Wings, this galaxy brain <laughs> has figured out how to infuse alcohol into wing sauce and he's got it's not just buffalo sauce he's got uh jamaican <laughs> jerk he's got parmesan garlic he's got it all all infused with alcohol this is does it I think get he's out drunk? of i i think so all ideally right. it would why would you put the alcohol in it otherwise i'm, I'm not sure I don't know. but I, I think they're based out of atlanta and <laughs> yeah right I, i'm I'm basically a lawyer, right? I should mention this is an unofficial sponsor. Okay. But hopefully someday we will officially get them on board because I love the platform. We'll get love them. the idea. Lit ass wings. Pop on over. Tell them we sent you. Also, I mean, the name they're... of the podcast is Beers Worth a Banter, which I don't think we even mentioned. Oh, okay. I didn't uh, know that. Well, first of all, it was supposed to enter with the sound of a beer cracking, which I did in the first take, which was kind of a wash. I wasn't recording at the time. Right. Did you hear my beer? Maybe I recovered. I did. No, yeah. You saved right, it for cool. sure. All right, cool. Man. Well, it was supposed to be a joint cracking. But yeah, the fact yeah. that you missed the initial one kind of saved the pot here. Uh, yeah. I mean, you didn't prompt me at all, but it's fine. Well, there's been little groundwork laid. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's true. Two minutes of groundwork and then podcasting. Right. And we're right here with you. We got it, dude. So This is going to be good. I couldn't be more excited. Well, the the bitch of it is, right when we get, and I don't want to say all our shit set up because it's just a microphone that I bought at Staples and Skype, but by the time we were ready to actually go, obviously what I want to talk about is sports, and they're not happening. And I came to the realization that I fancy myself a pretty unique individual, somewhat interesting. It turns out I'm just not like without sports. I have nothing to say. I have no personality. No No personality. No, without that, I'm, you know, C minus wisecracks and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. As opposed to me, Uh, I have charisma spilling out my ears. You know, Uh, people tell me that. A lot of people. Someone told me that once. Sober people? Never. Uh, well, I mean, we can still work through. It's been five years in the making. Is there any news stories in the last five years that we want to tackle? Or has it been a pretty slow news five years? <clears throat> Anything going on right now? Um, let's, no. let's let's pause here. Right. There have been some big stories that I would like to give my two cents on. Yeah. Um, okay, let's start with sports least relevant to most. Okay. Least um, I guess probably soccer, right? Uh, yeah. If you're not talking about like U.S. men's team, yes. But do you you don't follow an EPL team, do you? Uh, yeah. The Spurs. I, uh, yeah, yeah, Tottenham. So I feel like everybody <laughs> in the U.S. I mean, obviously everybody knows a soccer guy. By that I mean yeah. someone who follows soccer. That I just. Yeah, that's just drinking early on, like, Saturday mornings for me. That's, like, someone who follows soccer, in my mind. It's like I woke up early on accident and opened a beer, and there's a soccer game. <laughs> right, and now, now I'm a Tottenham fan. So I feel like I I tried to give every, maybe an on-year, off-year thing, I'll try and get into soccer. It never sticks. Yeah, It kind of did, though, with the, with the Spurs thing. I wanted to pick a team that... It wasn't like what every typical asshole in America, like, you know, Manchester United, Chelsea, whatever. With it. Tottenham's like a top five team, but not, you know, not a, a standard pick. So I decided to go with them. I haven't unique, super, uh, I told you, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm a unique you. individual. Up and down, that's you. Um, haven't super followed them this year. Doesn't fucking matter now because they're not playing anymore. But I got no, I mean, they did, they did eventually put the, uh, the stop on the MLS as well, didn't they? Yeah, I don't know. Did they postpone EPL? Yeah, EPL's out. Just but done. It's like, it's is it canceled? I don't know, because a lot of people report, like, suspended play. I feel like the only thing I've heard is, like, 
definitively we're canceling and it's not going to happen is March Madness. Yeah. Which is the fucking worst. Yeah. I mean, people who couldn't care less about basketball, you fell out of bracket and you're all in. Everybody, like everybody at the office has a bracket. Right. So people soccer. People have never watched it. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. It wasn't like uh, some of the like perfect brackets that have ever been made where like people who didn't care about basketball or something. Yeah, just statistics nerds. Anyway, do we ever decide whether the MLS was done? Let me look. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm not too sure. I know I know the crew is basically just not playing games, but I think everybody's in a fucking holding pattern right now. Like no one knows what's yeah. going to happen. It is ringing up uh postponed for everything so yeah they're out too somebody some source (laughs) said like at the time it was 500 people or more is is done for and somebody had said like shout out to mls for sticking with it naturally (laughs) because hell yeah dude but rep uh yeah they're out as well yeah out while we're on soccer because i don't know soccer or follow it i have a remember this guy for you uh freddie adu remember him oh yeah man is he i mean he was like eight when we were in high school so he's got to still be playing right um i think he still plays if i i bet if you honestly if you pulled like everybody in the united states and asked them to name one soccer player i bet freddie adu would be the most popular choice just right, because it's him. It, was, it was so hyped like by espn he's this 14 year old phenom <laughs> yeah. coming to the mls like he's not even playing in europe he's coming to the mls and then he was just a turd i also love that uh phenom even at 14 it's like mls he's probably not that good <laughs> uh, okay so i pulled him up here also he's from ghana i thought he was an american yeah yeah, yeah. and ghana actually beat united states in the fuck 2010 world cup And like the semis. Smooth. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so I got him here. He's 30 years old. Okay. Right. Let's see here. Yeah, signed initially with DC United. Yep. Which the whole like... I'm down, by the way, with making soccer cool in America. But they just so carbon copied everything from the EPL. It's disgusting. Yeah, like, like they call he them started football clubs. DC United, come on. And <laughs> the following team he played for, Real Salt Lake. Give me a fucking break. <laughs> In fucking Utah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it looks like he initially went to DC United, 2004, mm-hmm. 2006. 87 appearances, 11 goals. Jesus Christ, that's not very good if you're counting okay. at home. 87 appearances, 11 goals. That's from 2004, 2006. And then 2007 to 2018, in total, he had 17 goals. Holy fuck. Just for, like, a bunch of different teams? Oh, yeah. He's all over the place. And, like, after he played for Real Salt Lake, he wasn't (laughs) even good enough to play in the NFL or MLS. He's playing in, like, all these ridiculous teams. Like, Mexico? Just, like, random Mexican teams? And then, like, Philadelphia Union and Tampa Bay Rowdies. Isn't that, like... A level or two below the MLS? That's not it. No, that's just a fan group. That's those are the fans that go to the Buccaneers games. That's got to be rock bottom. Yeah. Oof. Poor Damn. guy. In some rest in peace, Freddie Adu. Yeah. He so, had his day in the sun, but and the reason great. we're he had many days in the sun. Dark fella. Um, the reason we're <laughs> we talked about reason... this. <laughs> we did talk about this. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Um, the reason we're talking about these sports right now is because of the the news item that you brought up at first, which is, of course, coronavirus, which is affecting us all right now, right? Right. D- well, before, before we delve into what everyone is sitting in their fucking couch for, yeah, let's work through other irrelevant sports. Okay. Uh, baseball. Yeah. Fuck American it. pastime. Do people Give actually it watch it, though? Don't care, dude. Opening day is cool. So, okay, first of all, opening day, most overrated day of the year. 
Uh, have you been to Cincy? In I think I tweeted day? it once. Cincy, ugh, Reds fans disgust me. Oh, come on. That place rules on opening day. Oh, I'm it's sure it does. And then the very next day we go back to not caring about baseball like the way God meant it. True, yeah. But, so did they, wait, did they start the actual season or were they still in like a preseason thing when the whole, this whole thing happened or no? They, I know people I, were beaning the Astros. I know that. He, right. For stealing signs or whatever, which I'm just like, I don't know. I, I heard about it. Do you, Have you watched you know, ESPN in like a while? You watch SportsCenter? I haven't watched ESPN since I was in like high school. Yeah, right? But the, so from what I've gathered, and this is, I guess, the baseball story, which has been beaten to death, but we have not given our take on it. So the final nail is not in the coffin. True. They, I guess they had a camera in center field that was picking up the signs from the catcher. It was like a Zoom situation or something. So yeah. obviously sign stealing has always been a part of baseball, but it's typically like just picking it up naturally or... You know, when you got a, a guy dude on second, second base, yeah, yeah, bring out the catcher and change it up, that kind of thing. When yeah. you bring technology into it, it's definitely a little greasy. It, yeah, it gets sketchy at that point. Like, same with the Patriots. R- well, fuck them entirely. They're cheaters, and I will never say otherwise. Sure. But, like, Spygate, like, it's, it's well known that people, like, steal, like, signs or whatever, even in the NFL. Sure. But I feel like it's an art. Like, you have to just, like, discover it and figure it out. Yeah, that's what Bill Belichick did, except cameras. <laughs> right, except technology. <laughs> yeah, but the Astros were like, I think the way they relayed the signal was by banging on trash cans. Yeah, they had like a trash can and something else. I can't remember what the other thing was. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't care enough about baseball to have a strong take one way or the other. But my the baseball guy, if I need a baseball take, is John, guy that works in my office. He's obsessed with baseball. That's like his thing. So I always go to him if I need a baseball take. He yeah. like acted like, I, and he's like a purist. So I figured he would be like, fuck this. He said like, don't care. Like not putting an asterisk on their World Series. It's okay. dumb. But I think he's also a Yankees hater. So okay. I think the fact that the Yankees came out and were like, if I had cheated the same way they did, I'd have jacked like 80 home runs last year or something like that. I oh, thought, shut the fuck up. I think that leaned him into, you know, actually, I'm pro Astros, fuck them. Sure. But yeah, and that makes here's, sense. Here's my take on it is they're cheaters and fuck them, <laughs> pop an asterisk on it because I can't explain why and I really don't have a reason. I fucking, I hate the Astros and I don't know why. Is it maybe, who's a little guy? Altuve? Yeah, yeah, I find I him know, a little smug, a little off-putting. You don't like his face. I don't. I don't care for him in general. Okay, got you. And maybe that's what's driving my hatred. But I really have just a total blind hatred for him. And when I saw that story, I was like, "Yes, I'm jumping on this. Fuck them. Don't like them." Yeah, there's not much halfway in sports where you're like, eh, "I don't really, you know, that team doesn't bother me." Like yeah. you either it's your team or like you fucking hate them, right? And of course, it's just as much fun to hate a team as it is to like a team. Yeah. And I guess I would say, like, you know, you watch baseball. Ah, I'm an Indians fan, but I don't I don't really follow baseball. So I wish I liked baseball, man. Like, I do, too, because I love the game. I just I don't care about the MLB. I don't give a shit about the game. I just like the idea of, like, listening on, like, a fucking ham radio and mowing my lawn and getting hammered, you know? Yeah. And I mean, at a certain point, baseball is nothing more than dude spitting on a field which i'm about especially right. in the sport very cool and so. and you can just listen like there's there's so much content there it's like what do they play like 182 games uh, it's insane i think i think it is 182 like if you could because i block off i like during nfl season i'm a Bengals fan for you know our loyal listener mm-hmm. um and i i block off like all of sunday because i'm i'm cracking a beer at noon Right. That's just going to happen. By halftime, well, we won't. We, you know, we don't have to get into it, but by five o'clock, I'm taking a snooze. Sure. If I could do that like 182 times a year during the summer, like 
and just have an excuse <laughs> to, you know? Because, like, my girlfriend knows. Don't ask me to do shit on Sunday. Game's on. You know what I'm Game's doing? Game's on. Game's on. It's like Monday. I we come home early this. from work. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out of the living room. <laughs> I told you this is my one thing. <laughs> this is my one thing. 182 times. So I actually I looked it up. It's 162. So a little more conservative. I think you can get away with it. Okay. Maybe I'll sell it like that. Sure. Be like, no, it's like 340 games. <laughs> and I just have to have the living room during that time. Oh, uh, never not. Never mind, babe. It's only 162. Today's a doubleheader. <laughs> just go out with your friends. Go out with that. your bitchy friends. <laughs> The ones that are always talking shit about me, I know. <laughs> yeah, go talk shit about me with that. You guys can just spend all day agreeing with each other. Go to fucking brunch. <laughs> Have a margarita and get emotional. <laughs> well, I think that pretty much covers baseball. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can put a pen in that. Uh, basketball, God. I, I don't care about... Uh, we're just... Okay, I bitched about... Claiming to be a sports podcast and not being able to talk about sports. And the three sports we've covered, I'm just painfully just grinding through. But basketball. Yeah. NBA, god damn, I don't care. Um, the last I checked, when the Warriors signed, who was it, Boogie Cousins or something? Yeah. The, the, the general NBA. consensus on Twitter was there's no reason to watch basketball for the foreseeable future. Like, the Warriors are going to dominate. Right. And that was not that long ago. And now, I think number one and number two worst teams in the league are Warriors-Cavs, or Cavs-Warriors. Either way, they're bottom of the rung. They're not going to make it into the playoffs. Yeah, what's the reason for that? I ha- honestly have no idea. Basketball is injuries? one of those things. I, yeah, I think there was a period of time where I think the Warriors were like, Steph, Clay, and whoever yeah. the fuck else is good were all injured. But yeah. Anyway, basketball is one of those things where I think it's more popular, obviously, than soccer, but I think more popular than baseball, probably. Yeah. And I yeah. want to stay up to date on it and be conversational, despite absolutely refusing to watch it. So I usually reach out to Schmitty, who should be on the podcast today. He's working, but I'd like, you know, give me the update so I can be conversational about it. And I just, I, I don't care enough. All I want to know is. Tell me LeBron's not going to win another championship. Oh, man. I kind of want him to. And this is like, I'm totally non-biased on this, saying that, like, I was, I'm not a Cavs fan. I, I actively root against the Cavaliers, um, not, not because of you. I, we kind of agree. Like, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't root against teams because you root for them, but there's a couple people. That I, I will root against. I'll root against their interests. And the Cavs are one of those people. One of those teams. So, <laughs> I, I, I feel like, first of all, fuck you. Yeah. But I feel like I never cared about basketball. But when I was younger, for sure, I was like an all Cleveland guy. Like, I like the Cavs, I like the Indians, I like the Browns, and I like... Monsters. I followed the Browns religiously, but the Indians and the Cavs, I just followed them because, like, yeah, I'm a Cleveland sports guy. It's kind of, you know, an obligation or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Plus, the Cavs were contenders. And then when he left, it just it pissed me off, and I couldn't let it go. I'm a big hold-a-grudge guy. And then it got into a realm of, like... Now that he's gone and the Cavs suck, I got to stick it out. I got to stick it out for Cleveland. I got to maintain my fandom here. And I was watching all the games when they were like garbage in those couple years that they didn't have him. And I'm obviously vehemently rooting against him. Yeah. And that first year that he lost in Miami to the Mavericks, and obviously Dirk is king. He's like, you know, good defeating evil. (laughs) Or at least that's how I saw it. Yeah. <laughs> so did most white people in America. They did. I remember someone, <laughs> when they were playing the Spurs, uh, one of the Cleveland guys I followed tweeted, because uh, it was a big hype of like, 
oh, people from Cleveland think if the Heat don't win that they won something. You know, that was kind of like the consensus going around. And some guy tweeted, okay, yeah, I'm rooting for the Cleveland Tonios Spurliers. <laughs> I thought that was <laughs> absurd on the nose take, and I loved it. But, you know, kind of building from that, like rooting for this team that's in the shithole and just rooting against him. Like, please don't win a fucking championship out. Because, I mean, he spat in our face. He did. And then I got to this place after a while of, I don't care about the NBA. I don't watch the NBA. I don't even really care about the Cavs anymore. But I've put so much into hating this guy. I've invested so much into just like outwardly talking shit about him. Yeah, I yeah. can't have him do well. It's a yeah, bad look on me. Yeah, you can't back off now. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, but, so, but LeBron left twice. So when he yeah, now Miami, we're in a place where he's twice separated from the Cavs, and I'm still putting all this fucking energy into disliking the guy. And I don't even. I didn't watch a single NBA game this year. But yeah. I put all this time and energy into hating him. And if they cancel, I'm not probably not going to cancel the season. But if they did, hypothetically. That's another year he doesn't get a championship, which, from what I've gathered, is uh, almost a certainty. And next year, he's 36. Not that he's shown any signs of slowing down, but, you know, a pad another year if I don't have to suffer a LeBron champion. Because even though I don't watch NBA, because I've put so much into hating him, if he wins, people are texting me like, oh, like... <laughs> Fuck, it must Wait. suck to be in the hate LeBron hater camp right now. Hold up, hold up. How many cats are in the room with you right now? Currently? <laughs> yeah. Or in my entire house? <laughs> currently. Go, currently. Go house two. first. Uh, two house in the is, room? House is four. Uh, okay. What's that loud motherfucker doing? Uh, that's the one that uh, demands attention, like, constantly. Okay. Well, does he know that we're we're casting? You know he doesn't listen. Okay, well, tell him. You don't think I've told him before? I don't know. He's still making some noises. The thing about cats is you cannot train them, and they will not listen. They will invariably do whatever the fuck they want. Oh, God. You remember when uh, when Gemma just was not fixed and just screaming outside of our <laughs> bedrooms every single fucking night? Gemma's one of my cats, by the way. But yes, I do. When she was in heat, goddamn, she was the worst. That was brutal. Like our neighbors Which, said shit. As annoyed with her as I was, obviously it's my fault for not, you know, taking forever to having sex with her to get her fit. <laughs> to get her shit. Also, yeah. this is post era of us having uh, what, six total cats in the house, including <laughs> five kittens, which just absolute vermin crawling all over the place. God damn, that ruled. Yeah. We I mean, I hate it for all of them, but I mean, yeah. one tiny little downtown apartment with six cats was a pretty absurd way to live. I mean, how many square footage was that? I don't know, but remember that girl that lived above us? Yeah, she was. She was quite striking. Yes, and maybe I think a little. We had a thing. I will go ahead and disagree with that. But <laughs> when she came outside and like was interacting with us, we're like, "Hey, what's up, guys?" And she had her cat out there with her. Yeah, and she was like, "Hey, this is my cat. Sorry, like if he comes down and like bothers you guys or whatever." And we're like, "Oh, no problem. Like we like cats." Oh yeah, really? Like, oh, do you have one? Like, yeah, we have six. And she just like went inside. <laughs> <laughs> she just came in, and the house, the fucking apartment was a goddamn wreck. I think the first time we ever interacted with her, she came home and we were shotgunning beers and listening God to probably Thunder by Boys uh, Like Girls. Yeah, it was. We're, yeah. Gearing up to go to that concert. Yeah. That was a, a lot of concert. a lot of not great looks on our part there. Well, you know, we were twenty seven years old. But that's subjective. <laughs> <laughs> Going to the ten year anniversary of a concert we went to when we were like sixteen. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Uh so Oh Jesus Christ, I thought we were done with basketball. March Madness, obviously. This is insane. Yeah. This sucks, man. I feel bad for like, well, this sounds gay shit, but like the student athletes, like mostly I feel bad for UD. Yeah, no, I totally team, agree. Dude, they had a team. Like, I mean, there's in the, my lifetime, they've certainly not been number what two, three in the country, whatever they were. No, never. But 
they've had decent teams. Like they've made it to the the elite eight within the last decade. They beat Ohio State. Like, uh, well, fuck, that was like four years ago now. Um, in the first round and like had success, but like this was, I, I, there were some like. Now it's turning. They can't lose money, right? ESPN is trying to make back as much money in sports general, sports journalism in general. Right. trying to make back money so they're doing like these projections and just like putting like pumping out articles about who would have won and shit yeah and like national news is i don't know if it's sensationalism or whatever but they're saying ud was at least like a final four team and a lot of them like cbs news had them going to like winning the championship over gonzaga over gonzaga who they've said yeah. has was going to win the national championship for 30 years and never made it to the final four Okay. Well, we don't have to. You know, we don't have to go there. We don't. We don't, don't have, have to have minimize. To. We don't have to minimize UD's accomplishments this year, which was winning a championship. I will not, mind. and I will refrain. Although the idea of like the Dayton haters and like the whatever fucking rivals they have in the A10 doing like the Dayton basketball coulda shoulda woulda T-shirts, I love no. that idea. Oh, I didn't see that. Is yeah. that a thing? Yeah. <laughs> which is just going to boil the blood of all the UD faithful. That fucking rules. Because Toppin is going to be like a lottery pick. He's going early. Yeah, so he, he's gone. And he's obviously, what, roughly 70% of the reason they were as good as they were? Yeah, yeah. So they just can't They can't just recover right away. Yeah. It's just sad. A, I mean, just a devastating year for, for Dayton players. I mean... <laughs> It was all set up, and when I thought, so I was kind of like hesitant with, they're not really going to do no fans, even though I would love to see that because it would be insane. It would be so fun to watch. Right, but I thought, no way they actually do that. And then they released it, and I was like, holy shit. And then at that point, nothing would have surprised me. So the canceling it, it did still a little bit, but the fact that they were going to play March Mad with no fans, like... This was definitely less surprising than that. Oh, you think so? I do because Look, like the imagine watching was March Madness national championship and fucking no one's there. Like, how much more surprising is that than just canceling it entirely? Because it was just all so ridiculous and so abrupt. Yeah, that's true. It's bizarre. Like that would have been such a bizarre experience to just watch on TV and there's no fucking crowd. <laughs> it would be so weird. I mean, they have to pump in like fake noise or something i don't know just be awkward otherwise the benches would have just been going wild right oh it would have been the bench mobs year you just hear like everything that's said on the court (laughs) yeah you got there's no there can be no hot mics for sure (laughs) no hot mics Um, like someone's gonna get so yeah someone's gonna get in trouble so for the love of god are we done with basketball yeah, no, it does suck about March Madness, especially, like, that just completely, yeah, sure, we can be done, but that just changes the, I don't know, I'm kind of UD-centric in that view, like, there's a lot of return teams that are going to be, you know, whatever, they're going to be perennial challengers, but San Diego State, too, like, that's one of them that's, they just had a fantastic year, and they just, I don't know about their team makeup, but, yeah, that they're probably not going to be this good next year. Well, with the perennial powerhouses, like a mid-major like Dayton out of the A-10 rising up and like, I mean, they were going to get a number one seed, right? In whatever region they were in. Yeah. And that's just maybe not ever going to happen again in our lifetime. No, it's never happened before. Teams like North Carolina, who were dog shit, just kind of got away with one. You know, if they're good next year, nobody's going to remember that they were shitty this year. Yeah. Yeah. But, um... It sucks. And then you can't get your fix of betting either. Right. <laughs> like that fucking blows too. It does. It does. Because, I mean, I've, you know, my office, maybe I watch the most college basketball out of anyone, which is like 10 games a year. But when March Madness is going on, the office is alive. Everybody's checking their bracket. And I've always said, don't hate a how's your bracket guy. Be a how's your bracket guy. Embrace nah. it. It's fun. Whoa. No. You hate a how's your bracket guy? Yeah, dude. I hate the people I don't ever talk to, like the old like the old like white dudes in the office yeah. who 
I have no reason to talk to, and suddenly they're talking to me about my fucking bracket, or t- more accurately, telling me about theirs. And I'm just like, I do not <laughs> give a fuck, dude. Right. I don't care that you predicted a 14 seed to, be- to beat a three. Like, <laughs> regardless of whether that's true or not, I don't give a fuck. I guess it's different for me because my office is five people. So I, I rarely run into the like guy I never talked to at the water cooler situation. Oh, mine's like a hundred. Uh, it's a lot. I mean, it's like maybe 250 or something. Yeah. That'd be a different ball game. I'd for sure be annoyed about anyone talking about their bracket at that point. Yeah. But now hey, we have a replacement. I don't, I don't know if we want to transition just yet. We can still talk about NFL cause there's a lot of moves today, but, um, the the new thing to talk about at the water cooler is just coronavirus. Like that's what that's what everybody's saying. That's on everybody's lips, my friend. Well, leading into the coronavirus, XFL canceling halfway through. I mean, what a just all time bummer. <laughs> I mean, Vince McMahon's got to be furious, right? Yeah. He invested. Yeah. I looked it up before we started podding. Five hundred million dollars he invested into this league, and they had to cancel because of the fucking coronavirus halfway through the season. The, the exact halfway point, dude. That sucks so bad. And I it's feel like, like maybe I'm optimistic mafia. because I wanted it to happen, but it was working, wasn't it? I mean, they were numbers wise, like viewership, competing with like some good college basketball games. Yeah, I think they were doing fine. Like it was declining from what I understand, which the AAF was like the opening weekend was lit. And then like the week after, like three people watched, but XFL was seemed to be sustaining viewership throughout the season. Yeah. There was a decline, but it was, I think much more subtle, I guess. Mm -hmm. And some teams like had a pretty stout fan base, like Seattle, they go hard for anyone team that they got. Uh, St. Louis, they now have a football team again. They were going pretty hard for their teams. Yeah. Yeah. But I was way I into know. it. I was... Fuck Vince McMahon, though. What? Go on. I'm not sure I have a follow-up. I'll just say <laughs> it. Listen, I'll just say it. Vince McWoman. That's all I'm going to say. Fuck Vince McWoman. Fuck the Astros. <laughs> nah, I mean, it does suck. It's... Ju- yeah, it sucks. Honestly, it would have gotten washed away with March Madness. I feel like, like other, and then NHL hockey. We haven't even talked about hockey, but like with yeah, NHL, we're, we're heading to most up. relevant. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll hold off on that. Yeah, go Wait. on. Let's talk about NHL. So NHL, the Jackets. Obviously, we're a Jackets podcast. Obviously, obviously. The, the, the conversation you want to avoid is when people suggest what is absolutely the truth, that the Jackets are just streaky. They just are. And this season, it was different because we had, I mean, we're plagued with so many injuries. But you want to talk next man up. I mean, no matter who went down, we were just streaking and streaking and streaking. And you had guys that are like, you know, crowd favorites that people love. Like you had Gerby pulled up, uh, Stenland even. And we just kept performing through the injuries. And then Cam Atkinson and Seth Jones go down. Yeah. <laughs> so now it's a different ball game. And it's just we're rattling off like we went f- like 15, 2 and 1 in an eight game streak or something. And yeah. Elvis had like six shutouts. I mean, it was insane. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, we're losing like six, seven in a row. And that's what people say about the Jackets. Like, they're not good. They're just streaky. And as annoying as it is to hear as a fan, it's the fucking truth. And you don't want to admit it. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it's hard to judge their season with all the injuries they've had. But they're 100% a different team without... They can overcome most injuries. Like, Cam, yeah, he's not out there getting points, getting goals. But when, right. like, Seth Jones is, like, the big one. Like, they're a different team when they don't have Seth playing. Oh, yeah. And as many, like, goof-up plays as he makes as a defender, he makes up for it in spades. And he puts in a lot of goals as a defender. He puts in a lot of goals, and he fucking hammers them. He does, man, when he has a goal and you watch the replay. 
Dude, it just watch him at the blue line during any power play, and he's just sniping. <laughs> um. So, yeah, not only was it a bummer to see them go out, and not that they were at the peak of the season, because they certainly weren't, but they were still in the wild card spot. Whether it be one or two, they were still in the wild card spot. In the day that they canceled or postponed or whatever the NHL, that night they were playing the Penguins. <laughs> Yeah. So huge game. Yeah, no, this was a roller coaster season because they started off strong and they had no reason to be starting off strong. Like they lost three All Stars. Right. And then yeah, and then they they kind of went cold and then around Christmas they got hot and then they got injuries again and Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It, it it was it's you're right. It's been absolutely streaky this season. And, you know, maybe even in past seasons, but this year it's been like sometimes in the like five games into a losing streak. I'm just like, all right, whatever. They're going to lose in overtime. So that's what they do like 70 percent of the fucking time they play. Oh, my God. We were absolutely horrible in overtime and shootouts. <laughs> but do you remember like, what was it, two, three years ago? We rattled off like tying an NHL record or something like 22 yeah. in a row. Yeah, no. Did, and then wait. we got our fucking asses kicked in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah. Did you go to me? Did you go with me to that game that was supposed to be like the NHL record? I did, yeah. Yeah, but then so we got tickets like a week before, and then they lost the game before we went, so it wasn't a, it wasn't the record game anymore. But that would have been so fucking sick, man. What is the what is the record? Was it eighteen or nineteen wins? I thought I thought they had over twenty, or was that just that. points? Yeah, look that up real quick. Because I remember getting those tickets and just being like, this is the fucking game. We can see the NHL record for wins in a row. Right. And, okay. and when, that, yeah. when that started, it was, or when I got the tickets, they were selling for like 600 bucks a ticket. I think I had four. Yeah, I mean, right? the, those tickets during the streak were heavy. Yeah. And then they, okay. they lost the game before, or tied or whatever. Um, yeah. Yeah. And that like those prices drop back down, but like, goddamn, that would have been a sick. It was still a fun game, but that would have been a sick game to go to. The longest home and away streak: Detroit Red Wings, who won twenty three straight. Holy shit! They were at twenty four. Oh five, oh six season. Damn, that's a lot. <laughs> that's a shitload in the NHL. Holy hell! Yeah, they were the best team on. Uh... What was it? Gretzky on uh, N64? You ever play that? Yeah. Yeah, I did. You had to play with the Red, Red Wings. And then I want to talk briefly, because I know this is a kind of a niche thing. Not everyone is going to care about this whatsoever, but college hockey. Yeah. Canceling right. their tournament, Frozen Four. Yeah, take it away. That fucking sucks. And I get into it every year, and I do my college hockey pool every year. But yeah, it's definitely a niche thing. It's not something everyone enjoys. So I'm not going to you know, get into it too much. But I have a couple of things I'd like to discuss. Go ahead, man. Go off. Go off, King. One, I am so all in on BG. As an Ohio guy, you know, the, the northern teams. Being, you're all in on being gay. <laughs> <laughs> you would think gay thoughts when I'm trying to talk dude stuff, but no, that's cool. That's fun. So the Northern teams typically dominate. I mean, St. Cloud, North Dakota, uh, even like Michigan, Wisconsin, Duluth, yeah, Minnesota. Yeah. So obviously I want to root for an Ohio team to do well. Uh, so my options are, uh, Ohio state who can eat a bag of my ass and Miami who as an OU alum can also eat my ass. Okay. Yeah. Left is BG. Who, All right. I'm assuming you've never been to one of their games. No. They are unfucking believable. I mean, it's an old style rank, which I love. They have like above the student section, like the original scoreboard they had, like when the arena was built in like the fucking sixties or something. And they're going nuts the whole time. I'm talking like from the college kids to like older people to like people who just come into the game or just fans you go to a bg game no matter where you're sitting you are not leaving there without some beer on the sweater maybe a little popcorn in the hoodie Damn, i mean dude. they're going nuts and i want to go uh, to that 
it's incredible. You go to one game and you're sold. Hell yeah. The, uh, the madhouse on Mercer, they call it. Okay, hell yes. <laughs> and BG's got a bit of a dirty team, so obviously the fans love that and play it up a little bit. Let's go. And uh, they were doing well in the WCHL tournament, which they needed to win in order to get into the tournament. Yeah. And, of course, fucking canceled. They're up in Bemidji. <laughs> and they just, they just uh, dusted Alaska two games to nothing. They're in Bemidji. I don't want to say looking to win the tournament, but, you know, that little momentum going forward. And just an absolute bummer. Because you thought, because I like to watch one on my computer, you thought, all right, well, we're going to see a conference tournament game with no fans. That kind of sucks. Because hockey, you know, definitely fans. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Driving it when you're watching it, for sure. And then just to cancel it entirely, huge bummer. But while we're on the note of Ohio college hockey teams, here's the thing I can't understand. So Ohio State, well, I do understand. It's because they're good. But Ohio State... They play at the shot, so a billion people arena, and they put maybe 800 people in there. So it yeah, looks bare as shit. Yeah. It's fucking quiet. Yeah. And you look at schools like St. Cloud. You ever seen their arena? Have I ever sent you a picture of their arena? No. It's I insane. It like, yeah, like Duke, like basketball, like people on top of each other, right? Yeah, very similar. So, and like North Dakota, going to a North Dakota college hockey game is akin to going like, a Rangers game at MSG. Like, oh, man. it's fucking yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. Good so if you're that top. caliber of talent, why on earth would you ever choose to go to Ohio State? I mean, it's obviously a football school. If you right. pulled 500 people at random that went to Ohio State and asked them to name a single player on the team, I'm mm. guessing zero would have any idea. But if you yeah. go to a school like North Dakota, uh, Duluth, St. Cloud, Quinnipiac, any of these schools, if you're on the hockey team, you literally walk on water. Yeah. How the fuck does Ohio State recruit as well as they do? Because they got like 16 out of 22 Canadians, and they're fantastic, and they're top five every year. How do they recruit so well? I don't get it. Yeah, so was Ohio State – how many seeds make the tournament? 16. So, yeah, the Frozen Four tournament is 16 teams. Okay. And Ohio State is – typically making making that especially in the last like five to eight years yeah they're okay. typically making it and doing quite well i think okay. they made it to the final four if not last year than the year before i think i picked them to win in your poll knowing absolutely nothing about college hockey at the time but you know whatever right i watch more college hockey than anyone that i recruit in the pool and i've never won actually shroy's <sighs> won like three years in a row fuck that guy dude yeah but that uh, he might have a gambling problem i'm not sure i'm willing to say that dude he <laughs> i feel like such a like a fucking novice because i'll put like 20 bucks on nfl sunday and like watch those games like come on baby come on baby <laughs> you gotta cover and Shirley's just like yeah i put 300 on hillary winning in 2000. <laughs> speaking of those guys Dude, the XFL so group chat. I don't remember who it was. Again, a, let's talk about our friends. It's a KHL. It's a KHL group chat. Now. Well, now, yes, we have transformed into the KHL. Yeah. But there, he was mentioning like, oh, yeah, I lost like 300 bucks betting on Hillary to win the election. <laughs> and somebody had said like a big loss that they had followed by like, oh, I took a huge hit on like, I don't know, betting on the Gatorade color. And uh, honestly, I didn't recuperate until like the arena football season of 2018 or something <laughs> like that. That's a gambling problem. I think that's P growth. Yeah, it does. Yeah, that sounds right. <laughs> For all you listeners at home, that's P growth. Yeah, yeah. The, the the people you know, I mean, they don't know us either, but yeah, those people as well. Right. No one's listening by now, let's be honest. Well, wishful thinking. The, sh the Shroy is bet like making a bet on how long this podcast goes yeah, the, the uh now newly formed khl group chat is just making bets about how Pop many times off. we say stupid shit how many times i call you gay <laughs> uh, if you're keeping track i believe it's two because i've been taking a mental note hurts the same every time <laughs> over under is five i'm gonna put that i'm gonna set that per episode anyway yeah uh there's a coronavirus going around there's a coronavirus happening. 
What does that mean? It means almost nothing to me. Really? I mean, not only do I live in Miami County, but I li- I don't have a fucking neighbor for a quarter mile. I just, I don't know. It's not, uh, I guess you compare it to like previous scares with SARS and H1N1 and all this bullshit. And it just feels like we never reacted this way before. And all of a sudden, like everything, the world as you know it is canceled. And I just, I don't understand. So you don't think it's a, a legit reason to be worried? Or you don't think it, way, it, like based on what's happened before with SARS, H1N1, sw- swine flu, whatever the fuck, like is it on that level or do you think it's amplified by social media? And, uh, I mean, media in general these days. I think definitely. I think those things weren't as prevalent when the previous pandemics were going around. And I think that does feed a lot of it. Like, Mike DeWine essentially be being dubbed czar and just, you know, canceling private businesses. <laughs> I, kinda yeah. totally I saw a yeah. tweet the other day that was like, uh, you know, Mike DeWine, like, when the city is in crisis, they appoint one man. Like the quote from Batman is just uh, <laughs> Mike DeWine wearing the uh, the cow. The seat. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude. That's Which, sick. He's like five foot, five foot two. Yeah, all five two of Mike DeWine just wearing the Caesar crown. So let's start here. Mike DeWine, in his entire political career, has never been dubbed like. A (laughs) go-getter. Now here we are. All these people across the country are like, oh, well, you know, here's a guy who's doing something about it. And it's just like, but what is it really doing? I mean, not to bring myself into the matter, but my one job, I'm looking down the barrel of getting laid off and losing my health insurance while there's a pandemic going around. So I have no problem with you know, taking precautions, wash your hands, you know, restaurants, if you want to like, you know, allow less people in, separate the tables out a little more, that's fine. But when people are losing their jobs and their health insurance over this whole thing, eh, I'm not so sure. Yeah. Um, it's, it's a really tough one. It's, it's hard for me to like formulate my thoughts on this. And you're kind of a germaphobe, so that kind of that surprises me that you're not. Are you worried about getting it? I mean, not really. And just because you're young or healthy or whatever, I guess. And I don't want to actually. <laughs> I saw a tweet pretty recently that was like, uh, "It's no different than the flu as a personality," <laughs> and that made me laugh. But I'm not <laughs> one of those guys that's like, you know, it's no different than from the flu. Could be a pussy or whatever. But yeah, yeah. I just, I think it should be taken seriously. I think there should be precautions, but I just think this is just way, way too much. And I think the damage and the backlash of all the quote unquote precautions they're taking are far exceeding the risks of just, you know, it's a virus that's going around. It happens. Interesting. I think I, I think I fall kind of opposite of that because I see a lot of like half measures being taken especially especially at work yeah like like i said i work in a pretty big office and they're making all these measures they're not having big meetings they put hand sanitizer and fucking you know uh uh, wipes in every meeting room now so you can wipe down the keyboards and shit like that Uh but they're basically saying like okay there's a chance that it could come here so take precautions to make sure that you're not carrying it or you know whatever Sure. But like instead of doing that, we're I don't I don't want to say we're non-essential staff, but we work at like corporate headquarters. Just send us home. Like just quarant like just quarantine us. If yeah. there's a chance that you get it and that you can pass it along and that's a bad thing, then just cut out the the point where you can get it. And I know that's different. I'm salary. I could take like, you know, I could I could work from home potentially or i could just take vacation and i could do that for several weeks so Mm -hmm. it's 
Like, I don't mean to discount, like, especially, like, like servers and restaurants and shit right now. That's got to suck. And yeah, people, I, guess, I mean, they're probably taking the biggest hit, right? Yeah, and wage, like, wage workers in general. Because I work in production and, like, production facilities that have a lot of people. Let's say you have 300, line, like, line workers, like, in an assembly line. Yeah. If one person gets sick or is carrying the virus and they're confirmed, you... What do you think? Would you shut it down? Yeah, see, because I haven't looked at it from that perspective for, for the reason that my office is, yeah, like I said, like five people. And I go into that office of those five people, and then I go home to my very secluded country house. <laughs> so yeah. it's, I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. Right. But if you're working like shoulder to shoulder with somebody, that definitely would be a different story. Um. It's just, I guess, kind of the irony of I'm losing my job and my health insurance because of a pandemic and like yeah. the people shouting, you know, everybody should have health care and like, yeah, I had it. And then you fucking cost me my job and now I don't have a job or health insurance. Yeah, no. And I don't think so anyone... if I get it, then I'm fucked. I guess I wouldn't say fucked health wise because I'm young. I fight it off. No big deal. But. I don't have health insurance, so it's going to cost me financially as well. You're strong. And I shit. guess, well, that's nice of you to say. Oh, you're welcome. I know that, but to hear you say it. <laughs> so, I, I mean, I it's different for me because while I am on the one side of, you know, getting laid off and losing your health insurance, I also have two jobs. So I'm not, you know, I'll be all right. So yeah. I don't fall super hard on one side or the other just kind of land on of like i just think it's an overreaction interesting see in in that case where you're like going to be laid off um anybody who's like looking down the barrel of that that's when i think the government has a responsibility not to get fucking political but like that's when the government has a responsibility to step like in and <laughs> this is a sports podcast right ideally <laughs> you had to take it there. I, you know, I just I escalate, dude. That's what I but, do. You know, permission to go there. I can't be leashed. You can't put a <laughs> leash on this guy. Right. But now I think like the government government needs to step in and say, I don't even know if they can do that. But like for people who are living paycheck to paycheck, where two weeks off of work, out of work, is going to cost them dearly. Right. There needs to be a contingency plan for that and i think that needs to come from the government you can't rely on corporations to do that but so i've actually liked what dewine has been doing and actually taking it seriously because right now i think there's like oh man uh i'm not up to date but maybe 57 confirmed cases in ohio uh i'm not up to date either oh, that sounds right i'll go with that so it, a good uh, reference is John. If you just type into Google uh, Johns Hopkins coronavirus tracker, that'll show you like by state, by country, like confirmed cases, recovered cases, uh, deaths. Um, so you know, I just follow that religiously because I'm paranoid as shit. But um, you're paranoid about this. I'm not really paranoid about getting it. I'm paranoid about spreading it. Yeah. Like I don't. I don't know, man. I see it as fuck dude a dude touches a coffee you know a, a, like the coffee pot at work and i pick it up and i bring it home and my girlfriend's a nurse you know yeah yeah i didn't she, think about that it's like she and from the other side too she's probably exposed to it uh like a ton at work sure at her work um but anyway if i can pass it to her and she like passes it to her patients or you know they've basically quarantine nursing homes and shit like that but if you give it to old people you're basically giving them a giving them a death sentence yeah the rate at which it passes is is, is alarming for sure yeah it's crazy i mean it's it's very communicable like i had uniquely a, so yeah it is and it's kind of like a it's it's super hard to fall down on one side or the other and i think it's kind of unique to where you're situated and so mine is, since I work with people, I'm thinking about it from my perspective, of course, where, you know, I have two jobs. Certainly I'll take a hit from losing the one and the insurance, but 
I'm going to survive. Yeah. But some of the people I, I wouldn't say work with, but, you know, work amongst are, you know, I don't have money for this. I can't even pay my groceries. I just lost my job because of the coronavirus. I can't buy groceries, even if there were groceries, which they're not. So I feel like it's kind of a crumbling of, you know, every, everybody without the disease is crumbling in on themselves, which I think is not good. But I understand the panic and I understand the, you know, need to be safe and take precautions. I just think it's significantly overblown. It's costing people their jobs. It's costing people their insurance and so forth, which if you actually contract the coronavirus, you know, you need to go to the hospital, but maybe you would avoid going to the hospital because you don't have the money to pay for it. You don't have insurance anymore because you lost your job. Yeah. Plus you're doing a, like you're, well, I think that's kind of the point is like not overburdening the system by preventative measures, not reactive measures. Right. Because if you go to the hospital now, you're sitting there for four hours and you're probably exposing yourself sure. to more germs or whatever. Like it's uh no, nah, I think it's I think it should be taken seriously. I'll say that. But yeah. I'm not I freaking out there. about it. I'm just saying, like, okay, here's the situation. It's serious, so like do something about it. Yeah, I think it's just, you know, this is something to take seriously, but you know, <laughs> let's not cost people their jobs here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, that is a big uh, thing. And so, what's the grocery situation like in your area? So today, not bad, but it was kind of alarming. Last Friday, I went to the store and like not to pick up much, just you know, some food for the weekend and stuff. And I mean, every single aisle was like completely empty. Like, Jesus. I mean, yeah. it was nothing. People were like losing their minds and like regular people just going to buy, you know, some chicken breasts and some veggies or whatever. They have nothing. They, they, they can't buy food. And then the, to the whole fucking toilet paper thing. Dude, the so, panic buying like, is so fucking annoying. Yeah, like, that's why the problem. Why do you need to do that? Is the panic buying and then... While you're saying like, yes, take this seriously and this, this and that, but like, let's not panic by here. But right. while everybody else is doing it, you have to do it too. Because you gotta have fucking food. Dude, I literally too. have to do it. I have to get toilet paper because yeah, I didn't I'm fucking stock up. Telling them not to while I'm holding 180 rolls of toilet paper <laughs> under my arms. Yeah. Ridiculous. But uh Did you it is... so did you find toilet paper around? Like, did you need it or did you even look for it? Uh, didn't need it, but felt the need to grab some not happening. I mean, I'm talking like people I work with waiting for the trucks to pull up at Meyer and Kroger Jesus and not fuck. leaving with a single roll. What and is I, wrong think, with people? I think that kind of like, I don't want to say fear mongering because it is something to take seriously, but yeah, no, it's alarmist it is, you know, causing people a lot of harm. And I think that's 100%. That's kind of the issue, but. We should just be like fucking China and the government just be like, you know, stay the fuck in your house or, you know, we, we shoot your ass. Well, <laughs> Let's I wasn't going to go there, but I'm glad you did. <laughs> I mean, that would be sick. Here's a side question. With SARS, wasn't that just in China or did that go worldwide? I feel like that was just in China when that happened. Man, that was like 2012, right? Yeah, I don't super remember, but. I feel like it was pretty stricken to China. I feel like it didn't spread out the country that much. I think there might have been some, uh, again, speaking just completely uh, uneducated on it, but I, I think there were like some cases in the U.S., but it wasn't as communicable, and the alarm didn't seem to make sense, but it did make the news a lot. Like, obviously, yeah. the news loves this shit. Right, of course. And that's the thing with... Oh, what's the fucking guy's name? Uh, Fauci. I mean, he's like glued to Trump's hip at this point, and I mean, you know, he's got a job too. And how much is he in the news? And you know, yeah, he works for the, the what, CDC or something? of Health of the United States. Okay, akin, yeah. So you know, he's glued to Trump's hip right now. Obviously, Trump's got to be <laughs> not that he ever says the right thing, but you know what I mean. And all Fauci has to do is he's a white coat. So, you know, if he's Trump's go-to, all he has to do is just whisper in his ear, like, 
public safety. And then, boom, media fucking runs with it. Then it becomes the first politician to do the most fucking dramatic thing they can think of. And yeah. then, oh, man, this guy is actually doing something. And then it's just kind of a snowball effect of just who can be the most dramatic about it. And then the argument becomes, you know, would be too dramatic, maybe not dramatic enough. And then yeah, it's while a, the it's... argument's ensuing, people are losing their jobs. All kinds of yeah, right, right. mayhem's going on. And the most, I don't want to say the most, but one of the troubling things about it is we don't even have the things to make us feel better. We don't have a game to watch. We don't have a restaurant to go grab a beer and a burger. We don't have any of that shit. It's all gone and it's all just like trying to decide if it's overblown or not. And I don't know. It's a weird time. I mean, th- that kind of goes without saying, but it's, it's a very interesting and it's a weird time. And like, it's really hard to, um, it's really difficult to parse where you get your news from because some of it's alarmist. Some of it, a lot of the people I talk to, or even like using it seems to be a lot of conservatives actually, but are just saying like it's fake news, whatever, whatever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but like there's a middle ground there, which is why I said it is serious. It deserves precaution. Like, but I, we don't need to be losing our collective shit over it. Like, okay, right. like don't do big crowds. That makes sense to me. Yeah. But don't fucking go to to Kroger and like shoot a dude over toilet paper not that that's happening but it's like that's what the media wants to happen oh absolutely and that's the thing about the media is they'll just eat all of it up and like increase the panic and it's just <laughs> i mean concern obviously very necessary but the panic is just absolutely insane i think it's causing more harm than good really yeah it's interesting the juxtaposition between uh like trump in this matter and the the media on the other hand which they're yeah. often at odds but Trump is basically, he's downplaying it, it seems like. Um, I mean, he did declare a national emergency, didn't he? I think so. I think he did, but at the beginning, he's kind of downplaying it. I believe that's because of like economic economic issues, which our economic system might not recover for, uh, fuck, uh, I don't know, a year, years? Oh, it's going to take a hell of a hit. Like, I've lost... Not in like my personal investments, but like my four hundred one k, like seven thousand dollars, which I've, like yeah, I've lost a fair like amount that'll recover, you know, like that's fine, but um, it's still alarming. Yeah, it's like holy shit, and people who are trying to retire this year with way more in their retirement, <laughs> right? Like yeah. you know they have they need six hundred thousand dollars in their four hundred one k or one point five million in their four hundred one k to even fucking retire com- comfortably. Sure, and they're. They're down to, you know, from 1.5 million to fucking 800,000. Yeah. Like, I don't know. That shit's crazy. I mean, timing's going to fuck some people up, just like the 09 recession did, too. But yeah, the, and then the media is trying to hype it up and Trump's kind of trying to calm it down. I don't sure. know. It's, 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 an, it's a very interesting time. I'm watching it with uh, much interest. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're checking your phone, like, <laughs> you know, throughout the day, always just going to be something new. But I feel like it's not as much this new thing with the virus is going on as it is this new thing is now canceled. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, a little social tip for you. This is not an embrace debate thing because you bring this up to some people, they'll get real mad at it. They'll get very upset. (laughs) You know, if you you like come in with a strong stance or even a soft stance, someone's going to just hammer you. The fake news people are the best. Right. They're like, what? Well, it's not. It's the fucking flu. <laughs> <laughs> That's not it's a personality joke. People get sick. People get sick from the flu. <laughs> like, I think it's a little different. No, it's fucking not, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> How many fucking people died from the flu? You don't see them canceling the football game. <laughs> Speaking yeah, of exactly. which, so it's impossible to say right now, but what's the first thing that's going to come back? Is it going to be restaurants? Is it going to be sports? Is it going to be I don't know, the ability to go to the gym? Yeah, they canceled the gym today. I think it would be like... I'm going to lose this pump, which really sucks. I think... <laughs> yeah, me too. It was leg day today. <laughs> I, was trying to t- I was trying to tell DeWine, but you won't fucking that. listen. Or you couldn't hear you. It was too low. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't... I, it's a good question. I don't even want to speculate. I would think that 
uh, having like securing people's incomes would be first and foremost. So once you think it's kind of under control or declining or whatever, you'd open bars and restaurants, but it's not going to decline for a long time. I don't think it's just going to be worse. You have to say like servers and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. I would think so. But sports wise, you think NBA, NHL done for the season? Oh yeah. Fucking sports podcast. I keep forgetting. Um, (laughs) Damn dude. I don't know. NBA. NBA. I, mean, I think they probably are, both of them. You think they'll both cancel? Like, done? I mean, people are saying it's going to get worse before it gets better, right? And if they, even if that's not true and it's starting to get better, the media is still going to eat it up well into, like, you know, far past time to pick up the season where it left off. Yeah. When does the NBA season start? I, I don't know. Don't ask me basketball. NHL is different because NHL season is really long, right? Yeah, and I feel like they depend far more on ticket sales than TV deals. Like, NBA is on TV, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I could I could see the NBA, and this is just uh, based on nothing, but being just more flexible and maybe, like, not having a preseason next year or... Yeah, pushing out their their the start of the season next year and having a shorter a shorter season, but yeah, allowing okay. like the finals. You know what I mean? Maybe yeah. it's three months from now, but that would be kind of fun, honestly. Or go from like league standings right now and go into the playoffs. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> that would be pretty cool. Actually. And I'd be that, cool with that for the NHL too, because the Jackets are still in the wild cards. But yeah, that would be fun. But I think the NHL season starts like way earlier than NBA. But I could be wrong about that. No, I think you're right. But that, it'll be pretty cool to see like, NBA play like NBA finals in September. Like yeah, when NFL is about to like kick off. Yeah. That'll be sick. <laughs> it would. Could be a whole new uh, melange of sports. Yeah, man. But it, I guess it will be interesting if we pick up, you know, this time next week or even midtime, midweek next week. Kind of see where we're at and go from there, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. How, how long have we done? We've we been on here like an yeah, hour. We're looking 12? at a little over an hour. Okay. Yeah, that's not too bad. Um, yeah, maybe we should do a check in like middle next week. And they should make me work from home, I think. There's no. Yeah, if you're in a big place like that, I think absolutely. I mean, my job requires that I be there, but there's less people. Yeah. You don't have to shake hands and shit. Like, I don't know. I touch so many fucking surfaces, dude. I'm just sanitizing my hands constantly. Well, it's so awkward now because it's such a natural reaction and like a you know, manner of respect, I guess. You reach your hand out and they're like, hey, you know, coronavirus. I think, yeah, it's like respectable now to just, I've just been given fist bumps. Like, I don't, what, like, people around my office, I don't give a shit about, I don't shake their hand, but like, right. clients or whatever, like, I'll just be like, you know. Corona, just give, <laughs> give him a fist bump. It's, you it's it, been right. a great, it's a great era. It's a great era for comedy at the office now because just every single fucking 45 year old dude is making the same joke. <laughs> right. It's <laughs> like, so, uh, coronavirus, huh? That's what I call it when I'm uh, hungover after drink. <laughs> it's like, yeah, that's good, man. There's all the Twitter stories of like, first reported coronavirus in this country it turns out to just be hangover and just a guy like throwing up like the hang loose or something. So funny. <laughs> that's, but. that's great. A comedy. People, uh, my aunt sent me like a Facebook meme that was like, uh, it's close to tick season. So you're about to get a Corona with lime. <laughs> like, with a, <laughs> like with a bunch of like crying eye emojis. <laughs> I just like deleted her number. No, that's good. No, that's not good, dude. That's I'm gonna add her number. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for those jokes, for dude. Sure. It's so bad. It, like that is the water cooler. But, uh, oh, no. All right, yeah. Let's uh, <laughs> Monday, Tuesday next week sometime. We'll pick back up and see what the fuck is going on in the world. All right, cool. Shout out to uh, Shroy and Schmitty for being the only two people to listen to this. <laughs> Absolutely, shouts out them. 
Are you uh do you want to say where you're like putting it up or whatever? You just want to talk about that later? Um, I'll probably throw it on my Twitter, but yeah, as soon as uh, we actually pump one out, we'll get into that, I guess. Okay. All right, cool. But yeah, that's it. Thank you for whoever is listening. We don't know anything, neither do you. Yep, donate to our Patreon. Absolutely. Play See us you guys. Out.